there's a high likelihood that the vaccine response will be able also to inactivate this virus because you have to consider that even though nine amino acids are changed in this protein, 99% of the protein is not changed. And we know that our vaccine induces immune responses against multiple regions of this protein, uh, multiple T cell responses and multiple uh, antibody binding regions. So that there is a scientific confidence um, that the virus will not just be able to escape. But let's wait for the validation to get the data. And we will, of course, update once we have the data. And how long is that validation going to going to take? And is there any sort of anything early right now that you can already maybe share with us as to how that's going? So the, the experimental testing will, will take about two weeks because we have to synthesize this variant. But what we already did is we, we evaluated uh, the sites where we have observed T cell responses against, against the spike protein. And we see that almost all sites uh, where we have seen T cell responses are still conserved. Yeah. Uh, so that is that, that is a good message. That means at least one component of the immune system will not be affected uh, um, by 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 these mutations. Mm. But you're still confident that that basically life yes, could I'm return confident. to some form of normalcy, maybe in the latter half no, of next year. And um, the evolution of this virus is still relatively limited. They are uh, just still one percent of the of the spike protein, and we should not forget that we have still the opportunity, if required, uh, to uh, adjust the vaccine exactly to this to this new virus variant, if this is needed. I don't think that this is needed, but if it would be needed, there's a technical possibility to do that.